he comes home from work and I had already made dinner. Well, I guess the chicken wasn't cooked good enough for him because he told me to remake it. So that's when he decides to spit in my face again and tell me he shouldn't have married me. Did you end up spitting in her face? Oh, you know, the wind kind of blew that way. She's the judge who gives rules on the law and life. She's intense with common sense. She's Judge Lynn Toller on Divorce Court, where real couples deal with real life. Jack and Joyce met at a nightclub and got along great until the day they got married. Now, two years after saying I do, they both know this marriage was a big don't even think about it. I'm tired of this man. He's 17 years older than me. He's not my daddy. He's my husband. I'm ready to get out of this. I'm tired of this woman. She act like a kid and she party too much. Jack and Joyce say they both want out of their marriage, but is it really over? Today on Divorce Court. All rise. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lynn Toller presiding. You may be seated. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Joyce Ray and Jack Ray. Mr. and Mrs. Ray, you have been married for two years. I also have in the courtroom Mr. Uh, Marshall Giles. Mr. Giles, good day to you. You are uh, Mr. Ray's cousin, and I will be hearing from you uh, momentarily. The two of you have no children together. Mrs. Ray, you have brought Mr. Ray here seeking $2,500 for personal belongings that you say remain in his possession after you left the house and you would like them back. Uh, before we get to that, however, I'm going to start with you, Mrs. Ray. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your marriage and why we're here in divorce court today? Well, Judge, this man, he's 17 years older than me. Right. He's disrespectful and he thinks he's my daddy. Okay, for instance, um, I'm outside smoking a cigarette. Mm -hmm. He wants to tell me something, so we, we don't smoke in the house. So it's only logical that you come to the door and tell me what you have to tell me. No, he wants me to come in the house, so I guess I didn't move fast enough for him this day. Yeah, so he came, Mr. Ray? He, came out, he oh. came outside, starts calling me all kind of B's, H's, and he shouldn't have married me, and spits in my face. Okay, so that's just one time. So um, another time, we're at a march. We go to this Martin Luther King Day march, and I wasn't feeling well already. I tell him I didn't want to go, but I went anyway. So after we get through with the march, we go to his friend's um, party. So we get to the party, he's already a little tipsy because he's been drinking. So he chooses to disrespect me in front of his friends enough where they have to jump in and tell me and tell him, you know, man, this ain't right. Oh, yeah. So therefore, it, it just keeps going on and on. So then another time, he comes home from work and I made, I had already made dinner. Well, I guess the chicken wasn't cooked good enough for him because he told me to remake it. Well, I'm not finna cook again. I already cooked once. So he decides to go in there and cook dinner again himself. So in between him making dinner, again, he wants to disrespect me, act like I'm his child, tell me, well, if, you know, if you don't want to do things the way I want to do them, then you could get out. Well, this is my house, too, and I pay bills, too, and I ain't going nowhere. So that's when he decides to spit in my face again and tell me he shouldn't have married me. Now, Mr. Ray, I'm not going to get excited. I'm not going to get angry because I don't know your position on this. Uh, tell me what happened when you, she was outside smoking that cigarette. Did you get angry? Uh, yes, Your Honor, I got angry. She's out there smoking the cigarette because uh, uh, I asked her to cook me something to eat, uh -huh. you know. But she's going to be lazy and take her time doing it. So how long before you got angry about with her failure to respond? About three minutes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's talk about the MLK. Uh, we was arguing about. She said I was drinking too much, you know, at the time, which I don't think I was drinking too much. He I always was... drinking. He always drinking, Yon. He never thinks he's drinking too much. But I was he just getting a couple of swallows much. in. That's all I was doing, Yon. And what kind of fussing were you two doing at the party? Oh, uh, the reason why we was fussing, because I think because she didn't really want to uh, do the march. She didn't really want to walk. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. She Your being lazy, didn't really want to walk. I was in pain. I had, I had a medical condition. I was going to have surgery the following day. Is that true? Well, if she had a medical condition, well, she should have never came. She didn't want to come. You made her. That's the whole problem. But I'm not her daddy, she say. But he <laughs> thinks he is. He thinks he is. <laughs> Tell me about the chicken. Oh, she made this chicken here. It was like it was so... It was pink in the inside and then a different color on the outside. Nah, uh, well, you, it can't it be was kind of rubber. on the inside. Yeah, it, yeah. You can't do that. Yeah, it was kind of rubber a little bit. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Did you, you spit... It. Did you end up spitting in her face? Oh, you know, the wind kind of blew that way. 
how does it blow that way Before all the time? we discuss any of that, Mr. Ray, why don't you tell me what your main complaints are about your wife? My main complaint about my wife is she partied too much. Okay. You know, for example, she came in about 5 o'clock in the morning. You know, I put the deadbolt locks on it. You know, I played possum, laid down you on the couch. You knew where I was going. Oh, no, I didn't. Come you on, know. man. Now, weren't you about? at all concerned that a woman out at 2 o'clock in the morning can't get in her own house might come to some harm? Oh, yeah, I did. I did at the time. I called all over everywhere. No, you did, because if you oh, were concerned, I wouldn't have never had to call hold somebody up. else to no, get yeah, in my own house. house. Just hold up, please, please, please. Yeah, whatever. Mm -hmm, yeah, Mr. Whatever. Mr. Mm -hmm. Giles, why don't you come forward? Yes, ma'am. And uh, you're a cousin of Mr. Ray. Yes, I'm sure okay. am. And what do you know about this union? She's lazy. Look at him. Look at him. She's a big old baby. Just... Okay, well, now let's not talk about the woman's size. I ain't size. talking about it. I'm just telling the truth. Don't say too much, because she probably started crying. crying. She's going to start crying. crying. She's going to really? start crying. You sure right. You mm -hmm. sure right. All right. One day like, I came you over there. You don't know there. me like that? You don't know me like that. You don't know me like that. You don't know me like that. Look, one day I came over there, I was hungry than a locked jaw buzzard. But it's not my job to feed you. Hang out, Mrs. Ray. See? See my cousin? All right. I came over there one day, I was hungry than a locked jaw buzzard. All right. I asked, I said, ma'am, you got you cooked today? She just looked at me like I was old TV. I said, uh, what's going on, Jack? She got a cigarette and went outside, and when she came back, she just started crying for no reason. Okay. Now, now, Mr. Ray, when you go over any friend's house and tell them that you're hungry like a locked jaw buzzard, <laughs> <laughs> do you expect any woman in the home to immediately feed you? I mean, nah, is, nah, that how, is that how y'all roll in your neighborhood? That's how we yeah, do it in the That's how we do it in the hood. woman is automatically required to cook. Judge, it's not like, uh, it's not like I was a, a stranger. I, I, you, I didn't marry you. I know you ain't married okay, me. I so wouldn't marry you. For you you I wouldn't marry you. you. Uh, no, I know, no hey, 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 hey. I know, I, I know one thing, too, yeah, for sure. No Miss, Miss, yeah, Miss, you took about a lot of ice Mr. Pop. Ray, Mrs. Oh, okay. Ray, I'm not doing this today. When divorce court continues. You say he's verbally abusive. Give me examples of the of, okay, of, um, of a time when he was verbally abusive. Are your meddling in-laws destroying your marriage? Call toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or visit our website at divorcecourt.com or become a fan at facebook.com slash divorcecourt. Divorce Court is back with the case of Jack Ray, who says he wants to divorce his wife of two years because she is lazy. But is her active social life what's really pulling this marriage apart? Mr. Ray, you say she parties too much. Why are you angry with her? You don't even know she, she is lazy. Really? You mad at me because I'm lazy? Look, she, she, she had, Mrs. Ray, she had Mrs. a job. Ray. She had a job. Mr. Mr. Giles, mm -hmm. put the hand down. Yes, ma'am. Going to ask you a question. <laughs> mm. What do you care if your cousin's wife is lazy? You didn't marry her. You don't live at her house. You're not paying her bills. She has what obligation to you that you think she's failed to fulfill? Well, I feel, I feel though he, she messing over my cousin because he, he got a good job. He worked hard. She had a job. I got a good job, had, too. Why you, you made me get the job? Must we tell that story, last, too? It lasted for seven days. You know, why was I working at Jack in the Box? Because why he you made me quit my previous job because he didn't like my hours. So She's I had to get whatever job life. I could get to bring in some money to help support the household. Is mm. that true? Sometime. <laughs> but look, look. You know, so they, you know, so Mr. This Ray, is how you know, he Mr. Is. Ray, here's the thing. Mm -hmm. You're you're out there at home acting a natural fool. You 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 spit on your wife. You, you get mad about the food, you get drunk and go walking off and all, you lock her out of the house, but when you come in here, you're not man enough to come say, hey, yeah, I did it. It's a little something, something. You, 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 well, yeah, you, you tiptoe, you had a little bit to drink, hey, you know, ba ba ba. You know, you a bad dude, you a bad dude. Don't, don't come in here weak. No, I, I'm not weak, Your Honor. Well, you, you coming to midweek. Well, can I, you coming to her strong. Can I say something? Mm. Can I say something? Oh, no. What do you want know, to say, Mr. Giles? She know that he was 17 years older than her when they met. Mm -hmm. Now, she choose to marry him. He enforced her. She choose to marry him. Mm -hmm. And then she want to complain about the situation. I don't see why she even saying anything about it. Because he, because Let he me, made well, the well, issue. Hey, 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 hey. Uh, I'm going to explain this to you, and mm -hmm. then I'm going to sit you down. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. She's complaining because he's a jerk. She's complaining because he doesn't treat her right. He's complaining because she spits mm. on her. She's complaining because she has a 
every lock jaw, whatever buzzard over there she, that he expects her to cook for. She's complaining because of the way he treats her, not because of the age. The age may be a, a reason why he believes he can treat her that way, but she's complaining about the disrespectful treatment that she is getting, which he has a right to do now. Have a seat. Ask, have, ask a seat. Ask, right. have a seat. 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 You know, you say he's verbally abusive. Give me examples of the of, okay, of, um, of a time when he was verbally abusive. One day, I call him and I tell him that I'm going to go visit a family member that had just gotten out of the hospital. So he tells me, um, he calls me B's and H's and saying, well, if you want to go see them, you can pack your stuff up and take it with you. Yeah, when you stay out at 5 to 6 o'clock in the morning. This is not even the same day. This is a whole oh, different day, a whole oh, different time. Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, so, Lord. So now, because I want to go visit my family member that was in the hospital, he got a problem with that, and I got to get out of the house that I did, pay bills did, in. Did you have a problem with her seeing her family yeah, member in the hospital? Yeah, I did, because one day I called her downtown, and she was talking on the phone to her boyfriend. It wasn't a boyfriend, Your Honor. What happened was I seen a car for sale. I don't even know how to drive. So I'm trying to get a car so the way he can get to work, and he takes me to work. So I'm calling the person about a car, he automatically think it's a boyfriend. I don't have a boyfriend. When do I have time for a boyfriend when you constantly breathing oh, you down my neck, want to know where I am, and I have to answer to you on every occasion? When do I have time? So, Mr. Ray, you say she parties too much. Oh, yeah, she no, parties no, too much. No more than he does. No more than he does. I could not party him if I wanted to. Well, she just needs to know how to dance a little bit. She I just wants to know how to dance. Mm -hmm, you know, you know. <laughs> One more time, Mr. Um, Ray. <laughs> <laughs> when divorce court continues. So he comes knocking at the door crying. I'm hurt, head busted open, bleeding. And I'm so scared. I'm like, what is this? What happened? If you would like your case heard on divorce court, call us toll free at 1 877 311 2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com and follow us on Twitter at Divorce Court. Divorce Court returns with the case of Joyce Ray, who says the 17 year age difference between her and her husband is one of their biggest problems. But what does Jack say to bring Joyce to tears? Mr. Ray, that she's too sensitive. Oh, yeah, she is. One time I asked her to clean up, you know, she just uh, got to my bucket and just started crying, like a little kid. What did he say to you at the time that the mop it, and it bucket It was never incident? good enough. Nothing uh, that I did was ever good enough for him. See, that she go crying now. Go ahead and finish. It wasn't good enough. Nothing was ever good enough. I couldn't do anything good enough. So if I can't do anything good enough, then leave. Don't make my life a living hell. What would he say to you? He would just criticize everything? He would tell me that everything? he shouldn't marry me. That's why I'm not um, with, uh, with my exes. You know, he would, just, he would just say derogatory things. Call me fat. I mean, just things that'll make me feel bad about myself. So mm -hmm. that's why I was always crying, because he made me feel insecure. Did you hear that? Yeah, I heard it. Does that make any sense to you? Oh, it do sometimes. But she don't have to cry all the time. Well, what else do you do when you're hurt? Mrs. No. Mrs. Ray, why don't you tell me what the final straw was? The final straw, Your Honor, was I'm at home by myself now. He's out hanging with his buddies. So uh, some hours pass, and I'm wondering, where is he? So he comes knocking at the door, crying. I'm hurt, head busted open, bleeding. And I'm so scared. I'm like, what is this? What happened? Oh, uh, I towed up the car. What you mean you towed up the car? I'm sorry. So I go outside and look at this truck, Your Honor. The truck is totally bent back. Like, the whole front end of the truck is in, is in the cab in the back. And the whole left side is to the is to the driver's side. So that means if I was in this car, I wouldn't have no head. If you'd have dug down. So, you see? So I mean that's that's the stride. Like how you gonna how you gonna be so irresponsible to keep putting yourself in a situation like that? I don't drive and it's you know because of reasons. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't teach me how to drive either. So therefore, I'm not gonna keep going out with you and putting my life in danger. But as soon as you now you wanna put your life in danger. No, well, you don't. I'm, I'm it's, good. It, it, it's enough, Mis Mr. Ray. What, what would you like? What would you like to say about that incident? Oh, that issue there, I did tell uh, uh, total the truck. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, I ran up under the back part of an eighteen wheeler. You ran up under the <laughs> back part of an eighteen wheeler. Yeah. Parked eighteen wheeler. Yeah. 
the CD fell down and I reached down to pick it up and the truck went up under there. When divorce court continues, will Joyce get her belongings back? How long was it in storage before you started asking for it back? It started off in storage. From the get-go, I asked him for my stuff, and he avoided me all the time. He never agreed to give it to me. Divorce court returns with the case of Joyce and Jack Ray, who are seeking a divorce after only two years of marriage. Tell me about the $2,500 you're seeking to recover from Mr. Ray. Well, the last time that I left the house, which I left the house, but he kicked me out. And so I got tired of him kicking me out every time he turned around and get mad. So I took what I could take with me at the time because I didn't have a place to take it to. But you didn't need to so, take all the food stop. out of the icebox. Stop. I bought it. You tell me I nah. got to leave. At least I need something to eat on. It's I'm always, a big girl, remember? It's always, oh, yeah, you sure live. Yeah. Mm -hmm. OK. So when I do finally get to the, uh, to the position where I have somewhere to put this stuff, I ask him for my stuff. He, he avoids my calls. He doesn't take my calls. So then when I see him out in public, I ask him, where's my stuff? Can I have my stuff? Yeah, you can have your stuff as soon as, we, as, soon as I get a divorce. OK, but well, what are you waiting on? What are you waiting on? She needed to pay half of the storage. How long was it in storage before you started asking for it back? It started off in storage. From the get-go, I asked him for my stuff. And he avoided oh, me all the time. The... He, mm -hmm. never, he never agreed to give it to me. Mm -hmm. OK. Yeah. Well, he can have it. here we go. Rise up, bounce, roll, run. Go screaming in the street. Never turn back. Don't look. No rear view mirror, no nothing. And you don't have any kids with him. Let me tell you something. He's a kid. He's a child. He's self-centered. He's like he's two. He comes out of the, He's not even man enough to admit, the, admit to the, all the jerkdom that he engages in. And he's a jerk to you. And he enjoys being a jerk to you. He makes himself build, feel better than he is by making you feel less than you are. Don't put up with that. There's nothing wrong with the way you look or the way you do things. Because he wants what he wants within three minutes, that's his problem, not your problem. You know, guys like that, they chip away at you just a little bit out of the time. Mm -hmm. and, all of it, and she cries all of the time because you're a bully. And there's nothing sadder, weaker, or ri more ridiculous than a bully. Bullies are the smallest people in the world. They have so little on their own. They have to hurt other people because you don't have the wherewithal within yourself, in your heart, in your soul, and in your mind to feel good about yourself. So you do it by beating up on uh, on people. And then you're gonna let you gonna have your cousin cousin bully her too. Jeez, Louise. Mm -hmm. I just, you know, don't get married anymore. I won't. I won't. You know, stay away from women. I sure will. <laughs> I understand all about this storage. I mean, first of all, I don't believe half anything he tells me. He can't tell the truth. He wouldn't know it if it fell on his head and made a nest. <laughs> uh, I believe that you've been asking for that stuff. Do you know what stuff she's talking about? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Do you think it's worth around $2,500? You... No, ma'am. How much do you think it's worth? I don't know. It's stuff like you get at the uh, uh, rummage store or something. It's really, a... if it was a rummage store stuff, then why do you still have it? Rick, name me some of the stuff that are, that's in there. My um, clothes, my shoes, um, a living room set, a big screen TV, dishes, books, pretty oh. much everything. Sounds like $2,500 worth to me. $2,500 in favor of Mrs. Ray. It is so ordered. All rise. Parties may leave the courtroom. Both Jack and Joyce agreed with Judge Lynn's advice to go their separate ways. Jack says that thanks to the judge, he and Joyce are at least on speaking terms. He also admits to feeling embarrassed now that he realizes how badly he treated Joyce. He says he never should have spit in her face.